My name is Saran Haldar and I'm an applications engineer for Hawkridge Systems. And in today's video, we'll be looking at how to import your manufacturer part information from an Excel file into your SolidWorks Electrical Library. So let's go ahead and launch the manufacturer part library. Now there are multiple ways of adding information to this library. You can manually create and add a manufacturer part or do multiple insertion. You can also use the online content button to access the online electrical content portal from where you can search and then add more manufacturer parts. Now there is a third method which involves importing from an Excel file. So if your company already has an Excel file with a list of manufacturer parts that you use quite often, this method should be pretty handy for you. Now, you can either import from an Excel file or a text file. So let's browse for our source file, which is a list of Phoenix components. And once you add that, you're going to see a preview of what's on sheet one, what's on sheet two, and any additional sheets that you might have. Now, we don't have anything on sheet three, so we're only going to work with sheet one and two. Also, if you have an existing import configuration that you would like to use, feel free to do so. It is going to quicken the process quite a bit. And towards the end of this video, I'll talk about how to create your own import configuration. So we'll come back to this in a second. So let's jump into the next step, which is where we get to define the data type. Now, if you're adding manufacturer parts, the only data type you're allowed to import are references. So let's go ahead and select that and jump to the next step, which is where we get to define our title rows. Now this is a pretty important step because you don't want to accidentally add incorrect information to your manufacturer part library. So in this case, it looks like I have five title rows. So we'll go ahead and change the number of title rows to five. And now these five rows will be excluded from the import process. And let's go to the next page, which is where we get to map our electrical attributes to the columns in your Excel. Now, there are two attributes that are colored in blue, the reference and the manufacturer, which means that these two are absolutely required for you to create a new manufacturer part in the library. And the way you assign these attributes to a column is by simply dragging and dropping it onto any cell belonging to the column. Let's do the same thing for the manufacturer and let's maximize this so we can work better. We'll go ahead and add a description as well. And because SolidWorks Electrical supports multiple languages, we get to choose the description language as well. Now there are going to be attributes in your Excel that are not present in the predefined list of attributes in SolidWorks Electrical. For example, the input voltage or the operating temperature. I don't see any attributes for those in the predefined list. So in a situation like these, you can go ahead and use one of the seven user-defined attributes. So we're gonna go ahead and assign value one to the input voltage and value two to the operating temperature. And later on, we'll be allowed to call out these information if needed. Now let's go ahead and finish this list off. I'm going to add the two frequencies, the use frequency and the control frequency. Now any column that you don't assign an attribute to will be excluded from the import process. Also, if you accidentally assign an attribute to an incorrect column, all you need to do is highlight any of the cell in the column and remove the association. So with that being done, let's jump to the next page which allows you to add more data ranges. So if your Excel file has more than one sheet and you would like to import information from the secondary sheets as well, you can do that by adding additional data ranges. Now we did have a second sheet that we would like to import from. And this looks slightly different from the first sheet. So let's go ahead and deal with this. Now this obviously has a much smaller number of title rows, one actually. So let's go ahead and update the number of title rows here. And similarly, it also has a smaller list of attributes to assign. So let's go ahead and assign our reference and manufacturer. The width, height, and depth turns out that they're already there as predefined attributes. 
so I don't need to use the user-defined values that are available to me. And once this is done, let's jump into the final page, uh, which is where we're going to run a comparison tool to compare the contents of this Excel to what's already available in my electrical database. Also, at this point, if you want, you can go ahead and save these settings into an import configuration. And what that's going to do is it's going to remember all these attribute mapping so that the next time you reuse this configuration during an import process, you don't have to go through this again. So it's going to save you a bit of time. So let's go ahead and run the compare tool and it's going to generate a compare uh, import report which uh, where it's going to tell us the new components it's going to be adding to the database. You might also have a situation where uh, the database already has these components, in which case nothing will be done. Or you could have a third situation where you have a very similar entry in the database, but some of the attributes are different, in which case the attributes will be updated. In this case, there's going to be 10 new objects added to my database. So let's go ahead and import them. And once that's done, we're going to go ahead and test it out by looking for one of these components in my database. So for example, I have the first component that was added was 2866747. So let's go ahead and search for those. And there you go. So that manufacturer part is now part of my library. And if I want, I can go into its properties and take a look at all the properties that have been imported, as well as uh, I can go ahead and add or modify any existing properties. You'll notice that uh, the user defined values, uh, which was the input voltage and the operational temperatures, have also been imported. So that's pretty much it for my video. Just to recap, there are multiple ways of adding information to the manufacturer part library, and we looked at the method that involves importing from an Excel file. So, with that being said, thanks a lot for watching this video. Hope you guys found it useful. And uh, do check out our YouTube channel for more videos on SolidWorks Electrical and other SolidWorks products. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks a lot again. Goodbye.